Hello, Dean Ravel and Bruce Maynard with another short video. This time outlining the principles and use of a grazing jigsaw, which can aid in your management and decision making when you're using rangeland self-herding or self-shepherding on your place. Now, the grazing jigsaw is a planning and recording tool. The idea is that it encourages and indeed ensures that management continues to change the centres of grazing and I'll explain that in a moment when you're using self-herding. Now you can influence where animals are focusing their grazing attention and it's that which we describe as the centres of grazing. Think a little bit like the centre of gravity where most of the attention is focused but not all of the animals will be in one location but there is a conceptual centre for where most of the grazing activity is occurring. You can influence that with the tools and tactics of self-herding and self-shepherding such as attractant hopping, jackpotting, flow-through fences and many more which are covered elsewhere. Actually changing utilisation patterns requires decisions on where and when to move attractants and all of us really require prompts and visual reminders to do so and that's the purpose of the grazing jigsaw to allow us to remember where the attractants have been in the past where they currently are and where we intend to move them in the future and more than just where the attractants are where are the centers of grazing that we've influenced through the range of self-herding tools and tactics so how would you go about using a grazing jigsaw Print out an aerial photo of a part of your property that you think can be portioned into 26 parts. Now that might seem like a lot, but in actual fact when you sit down with a map and start subdividing into areas, it is quite easy to split into 26 parts and we really encourage you to try and reach that number. There's no one way to decide on that size or shape of the portions and that's really very important. It's up to you. You're managing the landscape and you're managing the animals. The portions that you sketch onto a map, and don't sweat over the precise location of the lines, but those portions can be based around how animals are using the areas currently, areas of high, medium and low utilisation, for example, or how you would like them to use the areas. You might want to split an area in conceptually into a few portions and use them at different times of the year. The portions don't have to be around water points, but you can use water points in the decision making of where you draw the portions. It's an entirely flexible way of subdividing and can be changed over time. And that's really important that we're not locking ourselves into subdivisions that are set for a very long time if we'd used uh, wire through conventional fencing. Once all the lines are drawn, label each of them with letters A through Z and then this map with those portions labelled becomes your planning tool. So the idea is for you to shift animals and shift their grazing centre through those portions as you see fit through the year. You don't have to use each portion in each year and in fact there are most, in, in most cases that's unlikely to be the case. But you do want to have a plan and a record for making appropriate utilisation of all of your landscape that's available to you. As you'll see in the following slides, there's a table available to record some of the information for each month, as well as using the map, where you can record the grazing intensity as simply as high, medium or low. And by grazing intensity, around that grazing centre. What we're talking about here is really a reflection of the amount of intensive effort you've put in a location to concentrate animals in a particular location. That would be a high grazing intensity. But in another place or at another time, you may put less effort, have an intended lower impact on the area and not really try and pull animals too closely into a tight grazing centre but if you like a more diffuse grazing in a particular area, that would be a, a low grazing centre. 
Here's a diagram that might make it easier for you to understand what we mean by the grazing jigsaw and indeed why we've called it a grazing jigsaw. This represents the aerial photograph of your property which you've portioned into the 26 parts labelled A through Z. You'll see that each portion is a different size and different shape and that's just fine because the reason you've allocated a particular part of the landscape as a portion could be very different for example in area D versus area U. We have a table below your aerial map with the months of the year subdivided into four parts and we record the location of the animals in the top row and the intensity around the grazing centre in the bottom row. Let's show you an example in action. The grazing centre changes across the landscape as we move the animals through our management interventions with self-herding. As we move through portions A, then C, then H, then J, and you'll see the intensity of the grazing centre may vary depending on the level of work that we're putting into that part of the landscape. And when we get to large portions, we can stay in that area for a longer period of time and have grazing centres in different parts of that particular portion. Now we can record on the aerial map those moves and the intensity through scratching a mark with a pencil, for example, on the map. And we can also record it in the table below. So that that sequence of moves that were just shown in the animation, move from A through C to H, J, I and so on into portion V and the intensity around the grazing centre was initially medium then high then back to medium etc through to a low level of intensity in multiple locations in portion V which we can look back on and see well, where were we using the landscape quite intensively and which parts either missed out altogether or only had a low level of use and also when was that being used in a particular year so that in the following year we can ensure that we're doing something different. And at the end of the year, or in fact during it, we can trace that circuit onto the map to get a nice simple clear pattern of where the animals have been utilising the landscape. It's a pretty simple and easy to use approach but can be very very handy to provide that record of where you've been and where you intend to go with your self-herding and self-shepherding tactics. Very happy to talk to you more about applying this in your local situation and until we talk again, bye for now.